This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker. Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Obviously not in the studio today. Josh, Justin, and myself coming to you live from Don Shula's up in Canton at the Hall of Fame Village. Uh, very special event going on today. It's the National High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, we got invited up. We got to set up live here. We're going to have a lot of really cool interviews coming up with you guys uh, in this episode. Uh, stay tuned. Some of the guys we're hoping to grab, Josh Cribs, Terrell Pryor, Ted Ginn Jr., uh, <laughs> Eddie George, I don't Ugh. know if you've heard of him. <laughs> so we're trying, we're hoping these are all I guys. You're throwing all these names out there, and we we don't know yet if this is. They're all going to sit down with us, but we're hoping we will at least have hopefully one of these guys. <laughs> but <laughs> st- good. but j- this is this is called a cliffhanger. This is how you get them to come k- keep watching the episode. <laughs> but potentially we are going to have. Yes. Uh, we got questions for all those guys at least. So <laughs> let's hope they sit down because I took the time to to think of questions for them. Uh, <clears throat> we also might have the uh, what is it the CEO of the National High School uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, he might yep. be sitting down with us later today to tell us a little bit about the organization, what their, their mission and their goal is. Josh has actually done an episode uh, with him already. If you guys haven't caught it, uh, got to watch it, go check it out. Uh, but it's going to be a really cool night, a little bit different of a uh, little bit different, um, I'll call it what, platform or okay. uh, how, how we're structuring it, a little different structure today. <laughs> yes. You know, there's going to just, it'll be, we're going to do you know, a little bit of an opening and then it's just going to be lots of, hopefully interviews and us talking and that kind of stuff. So it'll be a little bit different, but I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to come up to Don Shula's, come check it out because it's really nice in here. Yeah, right here at Hall of, Hall of Fame Village in Canton, Ohio. It's, mm-hmm. This is a cool place. I told these guys the first time I've been to Hall of Fame Village like this, yeah. kind of back in here where all this new stuff is. I used to come to Hall of Fame nine, ten times a year with my prior line of work, but this stuff wasn't here yet. This is a pretty cool place. It's, no, it's very, very nice up here. It's, it's really awesome. There's, I mean, you got... Build a bear, <laughs> you know. Jeez. There's stuff for everybody. Yeah, you know, you got you got a little bit of everything. I'm definitely gonna stop and make myself a Harry Potter bear on the way that's, out of here. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of good stuff to get into. Remember though, if you want to get intros and voicemails on the show, head to the dogspodcast.com, tap leave voicemail on the drop down menu. Uh, you can also find the merch store. You get yourself some t shirts or whatever you're looking for on there. We got a lot of cool stuff. Uh, if you're watching right now on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Help us uh, hit that 10,000 subscribers mark before the start of the football season that's a big goal of ours and we we're uh we're inching closer there uh, we appreciate everybody who has uh, already subscribed uh up to this point you guys are the reason why we got invited to don shula's tonight probably if we only had 100 subscribers they probably would have told us <laughs> to not waste their time so we appreciate you guys <laughs> we, uh, all the support you guys have given the show over the years as we get ready to enter our what are we entering our fifth football season yes Mm-hmm. Our fifth season, so we're, we're approaching the half. We decade started with mark. when, well, the guys we're going to talk about here in a minute when Kevin and AB started. Yeah, so we go as they go. Um, <laughs> so if they leave, we're taking this show on the road. No, which we're going to get into. Turns out they're not going anywhere. That's right. Uh, signed extensions this week. We're going to talk a little bit about that before we hopefully get to sit down with all these guys. Uh, if you prefer to just listen to the show, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google. You can also search at the Dogs Podcast on all the major social media platforms. You'll find us on there. And lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to join the dogs. Com, become an official dog pack member on the Patreon page. Get access to the private Discord. Get an extra episode every week. Uh, get to just hang out with Browns fans from all over the world, uh, all over the country. Uh, talk about anything and everything. It's not just Browns football in there. There's baseball, basketball. I mean, literally anything you can think of, we got a thread for it. Uh, we're always looking for ways to revamp it. So if you, you want to hang out with us, you want to meet guys, gals from all over the world, Browns fans, a lot of, a lot of good people in there, a lot of vets. Uh, if you're looking for more play, we got 
it's like 50% of the Patreon almost feels like mm -hmm. they're vets. So a lot of, a lot of cool guys in there. Uh, a couple females. They're also super fun uh, to hang out with. So it's not a guys only club, I promise. Uh, so if you're looking for more content, you want to hang out with us all the time, head to join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So big news for the Browns this week. Something I think we've been kind of like just waiting for, like you knew it had to be coming. There's no way we were going to not see extensions for, for guys like Andrew Barry and uh, Kevin Stefanski, but the longer it went, it was like, what's going on? Why are we waiting so long? Um, we haven't got the details yet on <clears throat> on either one's contract, but we know that they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, both of them have signed extensions. Uh, if I had to guess, it's at least three to four years. Yes, yeah, for yeah, sure. you would think. So I, I know there's a contingent of the Browns fan base out there who, for some reason, thinks we shouldn't have done this. Since these guys have taken over, the, uh, they've gone 37-30. and 30. They've breached the postseason twice. Kevin Stefanski has been coach of the year twice. Uh, we have one of the better rosters in football. I know everybody thinks that you're just supposed to win the Super Bowl every single year. Um, turns out that that doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, there's other good coaches who haven't won the Super Bowl yet. Dan Campbell hasn't won a Super Bowl yet, but I bet you all the people who shit on Kevin Stefanski, they probably love Dan Campbell. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so – Turns out what it is is they've shown there's consistency in leadership in one vision and for the first time in a long time we're not we're far from the laughing stock of the league anymore. Okay, so, you know over the last over the last four years I did an episode about this where we have a better winning we have the second best winning percentage in division. So against other AFC North teams, the arguably the toughest division in football, we have the second best record behind the Steelers. We have a better in record divi uh, in division record than the Ravens and the Bengals in the last four years since these guys have taken over. So they're taking care of business in the division. People will say, well, you haven't won the division yet. Well, we can't help it that other people can't beat the Steelers or the Ravens. We, <laughs> we, we beat them. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting, too, just as a quick aside. Last year, we split with every team in our division. But if you think about the games we lost to them, the Steelers, the Nick Chubb injury, we were yes. winning that game until the very end. And then the Ravens, that we lost to them. It was DTR's first ever last-minute start. Yes. And then the Bengals, we lost to them on a throwaway game that we weren't even playing starters. Correct. So really, splitting with the AFC North last year isn't really splitting with them. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously injuries and stuff are part of the game, but there are some pretty extreme circumstances that help lead to some of those losses. Like, you're probably not going to win a game with DTR starting with 25 minutes uh, heads up. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you're – it's a little bit deflating when your all-world running back center of the locker room leader goes down on a gruesome leg injury. At the time, you're thinking... And he was tearing them up. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It completely changed the complexion of the game. Deshaun was obviously still, like, getting his legs under him. Like, he was struggling. and But we were controlling the game with Nick Chubb. Yep. And it's just deflating to the... I mean, it's a time of Nick Chubb's injury in that game. I, watching it on TV, I'm like... He might not ever play football again. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, that, and yeah. that that is tough to overcome on the sidelines. So, like you said, obviously, there, I don't want to make excuses. Losses are losses, but there's also context to things, like you said, in, in the Bengals game. I mean, I don't who was the I don't even remember who the quarterback was. Jeff Driscoll. Jeff Driscoll. <laughs> you know, what I mean, five on the season. He was on the us, team. Yeah. He was on the team for six days. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So, yep. um, yeah. So these guys have come in. They've completely changed the culture. We we asked guys in the locker room last year, like, well, what do you think of Kevin Stefanski? They they love him. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I mean? That great guy. They know he's all about the business, but he knows he, that he goes things about things the right way. Uh, he knows he has the players' backs. And I think he's shown a willingness to adapt and grow as a coach and as a leader. Like, you know it's not easy to fire Joe Woods, a guy that, you know, he's known for a long time, his guy. It's not easy, easy uh, to fire Alex Van Pelt. You know, those are tough decisions that you have to make. Um, it's not easy to bring in a Ken Dorsey who's going to completely change the offense away from what you've known your entire career and where you might be giving up play calling duty, uh, duties because of it. But he's done all these things. And the fact that he managed to keep us on track uh, through all the injuries last year. And even if you go back further, like how many coaches have we had in our lives where we had a good season, and then you come back and you struggle. Baker gets hurt early, you know, and we really struggle in that season, don't live up to expectations. And then it just it would have fallen off the rails. 
Yep. You know what I mean? And instead, he kept bounces right back with another coach of the year season, another playoff berth, um, and he does it with 20-some percent of the roster on IR. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Some of these stats, and you were talking about, they have that 37 and 30, so that's a 552 win percentage. Since A.B. and Stefanski took over, it's the highest winning percentage for the team over a four-year stretch since back in 86 to 89. So it has been a long time, and I'm pretty sure Nick Carnes on Twitter posted that the Browns have won more games in the last four years than the previous eight years combined, and we have more. We have the two playoff appearances in the last four years are more than the last 20 years combined. Yep. Yes. I it's believe insane. that. So, again, I understand, like, I've been on the record saying you don't want to settle for just better than you used to be, but we're not settling for better. We've been, like, I've also talked about this, we have more 11 win seasons than all but three teams. Yes. Uh, uh, since they've taken over. Like, there's been obvious growth and turnaround of the franchise. So it's – now, if, if he gets to the end of this contract and we still only have one playoff win, now you can start talking about, like, do – what do we need to do? Yeah. But at this current <clears throat> state, he's one of the best coaches in football right now. And Andrew Barry is clearly um, one of the best young GMs. Not only oh, yeah. in terms of, like – like recognizing talent. Some people like to crap on his for his drafts, but he's found first round talent in third and fourth rounds. Mm -hmm. And look at what he can, what he does in free agency. He legally robs people. Well, and that's the context you're talking about earlier too, with like the games, the context with how he builds the the team. I think, I don't want to say a lot of fans, but there's definitely a large section of the fan base that doesn't understand that what he does in free agency and with the trades, that means that with the draft, we're not drafting for starters. Nope. Now, do we get some starters through the drafts? Sure. That's awesome. Like you said, third, you know, we get Martin Emerson's, we get DeWan Jones's, we get some of these guys later, but we don't have to because what he can, how he can build the team means, okay, now you go into the draft. We talked about it this whole offseason, depth and development, and that's exactly yep. what they did. Yep. For I don't know for how you guys feel, but for me, it was more of like a, if not, like a, not an if thing, but like a when thing. How long were we going to have to wait? I think Blake touched on it, and it was like the biggest point of the whole thing is there's stability for once like in my entire life we've looked for every two three years there's a turnaround we're new coach new gm we're starting over at least i can say for once in my life there's stability um at the head coaching position and at the general manager position and it's kind of a relief i don't i don't ever wonder going into it's uh, it's nice i go hey well we're going to take the best player available or whatever we're not looking for starters anymore. Like, we have to hit this pick or we're going to be a dumpster fire. So, uh, very, very deserved uh, extension. And I, and I know June 1st is an important date in terms of, like, the league year. You know, there's the, the, the pre-June 1st cuts and trades and the post. I don't know if the June 1st date had anything to do with these extensions or, mm-hmm. you know, if there was a benefit to waiting until after June 1st to sign these guys. But... It just, whenever it came, like, right in early June, it's like, mm, maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know for sure, but it's just a little speculation. Yep. And like you guys have said about the draft, too, turns out if, if you're needing to hit, hit on Brian Rubisky and Muhammad Massaqua, and you need them to be day one contributors and starters, you've taken a wrong turn somewhere. Yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Very good. Yes. So the fact that, like you guys have said, we are going into Andrew Barry's drafts. Yes, we haven't had first round picks because of the Deshaun trade, but we're we, we're getting guys like um, did we, was that JOK? Was that was that Andrew Barry's first draft? Yes. Yeah. So we're getting guys like JOK. Um, we got Newsom in the first when he did have a first round pick. Turns out he's pretty good. Uh, no, that was the second draft. Was that a second the, draft? The first one would have been Wills and Grant Delpit. That's fair. Uh, so the second the second okay. draft would have been. No, Newsom obviously, and okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Wills. Who's Wills? Jed Wills. Oh, Jed Wills. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking Greedy Williams at first. Um, and then I was like, I, did you say the wrong name? Uh, but no. So, like you said, very deserved. I'm very excited to see what they do. I think you've seen a lot of growth out of Kevin, too, like when it comes to his like social skills, I guess, in terms of with the team. Like he's. Early in his career, I feel like he was maybe slightly robotic. I think I've called him an engineer before where he's, like, very smart, but he doesn't relate well to the people. And I think you've seen a lot of growth with him over even the last year. He's shown a lot more 
emotion on the sidelines, and it feels genuine. There were people early that just wanted him to be freaking out just so our coach could be freaking out. And I was like, I don't want him to be fake freaking out. Right. I want him to be himself. And you know what I mean? And I think, like, you've seen him. He's showing some more emotion. He's getting a little chirpy uh, at times if, you know, there's a bad call. And I think uh, he shows up to Deshaun's uh, restaurant opening. He's been on the McAfee show. Like, you're seeing him, like, kind of come out, come out of his shell a little bit. And I think, um, I think the sky's the limit for Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry. Well, and he just did his uh, youth camp in, at Cleveland Brown Stadium this past week, and Deshaun Watson came to that. You know, yeah, so it's just cool to see those two obviously build that relationship and continue to support each other. We, you know, like you said on the podcast with Deshaun and everything, it was just fun to see that little bit behind the scenes banter and a little more depth of the relationship than what we don't get the behind the scenes in the no. locker room type views, obviously, as fans. So it's, it's cool to see that every now and again when it's available. Yeah. So, uh, well, I mean, I don't have anything else to say about it. I think until we get some details, I'll be, yeah, I'll be very thing. curious. Yeah, no about details, the details yet. So um, I don't know, like, why the, why the secrecy? Like, didn't you just say maybe they haven't officially signed yet? Maybe that's why. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, they announced them, but yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe they, yeah. Maybe they got to cross some I's and dot some T's. Yeah, who knows? So I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited. Let us know what you guys think about the, uh, the extensions for AB and Kevin. Um, and stay tuned because – we're hopefully going to be sitting down with people way more famous than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the way this episode is going to roll, like if you're just listening, watching, we're going to be cutting in and out just with different interviews with different people here at the national high school football hall of fame up at, like Blake said, Don Shula's restaurant in hall of fame village is pretty cool. And I'm excited for this. This is going to be a really fun episode to put together. If we get, if we get all the guys that we think that we have a chance to get that we've, we've kind of hopefully lined up. It's going to be like the best day. Second, I'll, I'll call it the third best day of my life. <laughs> yeah, That's fair. Smart. I, had, I got Smart. Yeah, I got married. I had a child. And now this. There you go. So uh, I'm very excited. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Dog Pack Father's Day is right around the corner. So what do you give the man who has essentially everything he already needs? I mean, it's always so hard at Father's Day and, and on dad's birthdays and things like that. So what does this guy even really need? Well, let me make it easy for you guys. Get him steak and burgers and brats and jumbo franks and chicken and everything that Omaha Steaks has to offer because dads want meat and it's the perfect gift because you know he's going to use it. It's grilling season. Your dad, your grandpa, these guys, you as a dad, we're, we're going to be grilling out all summer long. So get things kicked off the right way with Omaha Steaks for Father's Day. It's what I get my dad, my grandpa, my father-in-law every year for Father's Day because I know they're going to use it. They love the food and it just goes a long way. They can continue. I mean, obviously they grill out once, twice, three times, and they just keep using the food that you got them for Father's Day. It's the perfect gift. And right now, when you go to omahasteaks.com, use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out for an additional discount when you shop the gourmet gift packages for Father's Day. The Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks are making this very easy for you guys to put a smile on the big guys' faces this summer. They've got hand-selected gift packages starting at just $89 for Father's Day. And like I said, omahasteaks.com, use that promo code DOGS when you check out for an additional discount on your order. So don't stress, don't fret, make Father's Day easy for all the dads in your life. And you know, if, if your wife or your kids are saying, hey dad, what do you want for Father's Day? Just tell them, get me some damn good food from Omaha Steaks. OmahaSteaks.com, promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S when you check out. Shop the Father's Day selection, all their gift packages starting at $89. And with that promo code DOGS when you check out, you get an additional discount on your order. So don't wait. Get everything ready to go now. OmahaSteaks.com, promo code DOGS. Get all the dads in your life the perfect gift for Father's Day. For the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase, it's a culture. And the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe. For the safety-minded who watch everyone's backs, Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. So we're happy to welcome 2024 National High School 
Football Hall of Fame inductee, Nate Burleson, to the show. What an honor to have you. Congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. It, it was an awesome ceremony, and we're super pumped to have you sitting here with us. I appreciate you guys having me on, man. Thank you for the congratulations. Um, it's, it's a blessing. It's an honor to, to be inducted into the high school football hall of fame um, hanging out with some of these legends you know listen i've, I've been to been to canton as a, a former player as an analyst on good morning football covering the hall of fame weekend so to actually be here and to be inducted into something um it's just pretty damn cool man. It, it was really awesome and i'm going off script already real quick <laughs> sitting through the speeches i thought it was very cool you had such a mix of people up on stage there was mm. Former NFL players, yep. you know, there's yourself, there's guys like Ted Ginn, Eddie George is a guy like, I mean, my dad's yeah. going to be so jealous. And then, <laughs> uh, and then there's guys who are 30, 40 year high school teachers, football coaches. Legends. Yes. And you guys right? are sharing the stage together, talking about high school football. So I thought that was just a very cool dynamic of the ceremony. Um, and I was just wondering, how important is it to just continue to grow the game of football at these younger levels? especially at the high school football level? Well, it's extremely important. You know, with the emergence of flag football, um, you know, the game has really expanded from what the traditional form of it was when we grew up. I'm an 80s baby, so I grew up and there wasn't any flag football. It was just throw on the pads, start hitting, <laughs> here you are, welcome to football. Um, but now you have different aspects and different avenues to take if you want to get involved with football. And it's important not only to continue to grow the game, but to recognize those that are influential figures. And that's why I enjoyed meeting the coaches, because even though a lot of the coaches that were here, uh, some of them were more Ohio based. Mm -hmm. um, I have those same exact coaches back home in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And as you get older, you realize that they don't get the flowers that they deserve. We talk about them amongst ourselves. We get older and start growing beards and mustaches and get drunk <laughs> with our buddies. And we're like, you remember back in high school? And those are legendary men and women for us. But they don't often get recognized on a national scale. So for the National High School Hall of Fame to recognize those coaches and place them on the same stage with players that played the game, it's a beautiful thing. And I didn't really like it when the coaches would say, I don't belong here. I wanted to scream out loud, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If anything, you belong here first. Right. Because there is no superstar NFL player without one coach that he can point to, whether it was in Pop Warner or in high school, that changed his life. That's a fact. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, I never went to the NFL, but I wouldn't be who I am as just a sideshow podcaster slash <laughs> guy who goes to work every day. If I, my high school football coach didn't teach me things like accountability, right, responsibility, yeah. getting up and going to work and going to practice, even if I don't feel good. So just creating good young men for society. I think high no school doubt. football is incredibly important. Yeah. What is your favorite or... Did you have like a, a favorite memory of a high specific high school game, like where you Ooh. just went off, or like a huge game, like the girl was in in attendance and you caught oh, the game oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just something something crazy from high school. That okay, you you're going deep. You're going yeah. deep. Um, there's a couple of things that stand out in high school. One, we were a running team, so uh, we were three yards in a cloud of dust, and I remember like having these like intrusive thoughts on whether I was a good receiver or not because I didn't have a template. Uh -huh. You know, I knew other guys that played on other teams that were catching, like, 50, 60 balls a season. And my senior year, I had, like, 17 catches or 18 catches, and eight of them went to the house. So <laughs> okay. people were telling me, like, Nate, don't worry about the amount of catches you're getting. Every time you touch the ball, there's a 50% chance that you're going to score. <laughs> um, so that was one thing that stood out. And that's basically not me patting myself on the back. It's more just, like, telling these young kids – don't trip about the system. Just take advantage of the opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing was uh, being a punt returner. I was so scared of punt return. <laughs> I just thought that I was going to get injured. I thought it was going to be like these kamikaze <laughs> gunners that <laughs> were going to knock me out. And nobody wants to be the kid in high school with snot bubbles. Like, <laughs> you can never recover from that. So the first punt, the first time I was out there, coach put me out there, and he knew I was scared. I let the ball hit the ground, and it bounced like seven yards, right? So we lost seven yards. I remember my coach, Monty Kohler, shout out to him. He was like, 
don't let the ball bounce. <laughs> Nate. And he's just screaming at me. And I'm like, damn, man, I don't want to get knocked out. So the next punt, I ran up to the ball, closed my eyes, and then when I opened them, they were more scared of me with the ball. <laughs> at that point, I was like, oh, damn. I'm Devin Hester out here. <laughs> so I, I started cooking after that. That's awesome. I uh, I didn't have any cool memories like that. No, I just played line. Uh, uh, You're in the trenches, though, yes, man. You guys yeah. make all of it happen. Yeah, that's what I tell myself. Um, so, I, yeah. That's Terrell Pryor for anybody who. Terrell Pryor, uh, a yeah, legend. Yeah. I told him yeah, earlier, yes. I said, you are one of the best athletes, the best all-around athletes to ever play in the NFL. We, like, we don't talk about it enough. That dude, what he could do on the football field, going from quarterback to receiver, like, I know, like, in a lot of people's eyes, it, his career didn't have the same type of depth that maybe he wanted or his fans wanted. But I'm talking about from the perspective of his peers, we respected the hell out of him. We're uh, we're very biased towards Terrell Pryor being huge yeah. Buckeyes fans and Browns fans. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I wanted to talk about – you went from you transitioned from playing to broadcasting. Yeah. You've seen great success in yeah. in the broadcasting, obviously on the football field as well. How do you compare the preparation between getting ready to play at the highest level compared to broadcasting at the highest level? You didn't step into like big time sports Ohio. You're on CBS. You know how do you how's the preparation compare or differ? Man, the, the preparation in news. Um, it's much tougher than in football. Yeah. You know, after a while playing football for so long, you you have a little bit of muscle memory. You know, you know the game like the back of your hand. Now, don't get me wrong, system change. You have to study a little bit more, but you're just repeating the same thing you've been doing for years. When it comes to news, one, you're never off. Mm-hmm. Two, you're covering everything, the full spectrum, um, political political issues, societal issues, pop culture, movies, music, and everything in between. And you have to be on point. We're talking two hours of live TV. So I don't have a time to stop down and be like, hey, cut, let's do it again. I don't have time to, to look at my producers and say, hey, oh, give, give me another hour to prepare for the show. You have to be on top of every single topic. So for that reason, we're over preparing all the time. Um, but when the show turns out well or we get recognized and win an Emmy, or I sit down with a politician or an athlete or a celebrity and people love the interview, that's the most fulfilling thing ever. It's like it's like scoring a touchdown. Um, yeah, we're working in news. It's the hardest job that I've ever had, but it's the most fulfilling job. That's awesome. I, and I think that's really cool for people to hear because when I think football, I think two-a-days, lifting, no days off, coaches yelling at me. So to hear that the preparation for broadcasting is even more intense. No it's, doubt. Uh, that's crazy and interesting to hear. So we're a Browns podcast, obviously. So I wanted to just pick your, your brain real quick on a Browns question. Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Barry recently extended. What do you, what are your thoughts on the job they've done so far and, and how we're going to move forward with them? Because most of my life, the Browns were the laughing stock, and we feel like we're really starting to turn a corner. Is that yeah. the way – National media people are seeing it as well. No doubt. You got, you got the right coach. Kevin Stefanski is a tremendous coach. Um, last year was just one of those years, man. The injury bug hit the squad early. And from there, it just seems like the, the team was trying to stay afloat, just doggy, doggy paddling in the deep end. Um, Deshaun Watson, I'm a huge fan of his. Um, obviously, he had those couple of years uh at the end of his uh, Houston, Texas run where he was just like a one-man show. Um, and he hasn't really recaptured that magic. As much as I could praise Deshaun Watson, um, I can also say he hasn't played his best football as a oh, Cleveland yeah, Brown. For sure. And that's just me keeping it real. Yep. Um, but I know that he's going to recapture that. That's the great thing about Cleveland. Think about the success that the squad has had over the last couple of years. And you haven't even seen Deshaun play his best football. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like that's what you can get excited about. And I guarantee, listen, let's just call it what it is. A lot of the off the field stuff has quieted. Um, health is better. The mental health is better. Mm-hmm. Now you're getting a healthy, locked in, focused Deshaun Watson, along with other players that are heavily motivated. For multiple reasons. Some are vets that want to make the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. Others are young guys that want to get a big contract. 
And that's the perfect storm when you're trying to build a team that's motivated to get into the postseason. Um, I, I think they have to, along with Deshaun's athletic ability, Kevin Stefanski got to get back to what he know and lead the league in play action. The, the, the game needs to be played from the inside out. I love Coop, but um, it makes it easier when you can dominate the interior of the defense and then have him running post digs out. He's one of the best route runners in all the football. So, mm-hmm. um, and then defense, do what they have been doing. Just get nasty, uh, be more aggressive than not at times. I think there's a lot to smile about. Uh, the only thing with all of that optimism and glass half full on the Cleveland Browns, that division is hell, man. <laughs> yes. You don't got to yeah. tell us. So, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I can sit here and, and, and praise the Browns until the sun goes down, but they are going up against some juggernauts. Could be the best division in all of football. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Especially with Russell Wilson with the Steelers. I agree. Yeah. Uh, we think yep. the sleeper, the Steelers are being slept on a little bit, and that's coming from Browns fans. Uh, so we want to get you out here. only want to take a couple minutes of your time. Okay. Just one last question. Yeah. This is a high school uh, Hall of Fame induction, uh, induction. Young kids play high school football. What's one piece of advice you'd give a high school player out there right now that's grinding, trying to make it to the next level, whether that be a, a, small, a college or they got pro dreams one day? I would say in addition to football, do something else. Uh, don't just be a – a singular football player. If you run track, play basketball, baseball, whatever it is, it'll make you a better football player. And then secondly, make sure that you're not discouraged by a lack of attention, stats, um, or even opportunities. I remember there was a kid that I was coaching a few years ago, and he came to me, he's like, Coach, I'm not really going to play past high school. My parents don't want me to play. I, I think I need to quit. And I was like, do you love the game? He loved the game. Loved it. Could talk about it all day long. He said, yeah, I love it. My parents think I should quit. And I was like, why? He said, because they they told me that there's other opportunities out there that I need to take more seriously. And I had to explain to him that, like, he loves football players. So I'm like, think about how you look at Saquon and Josh Allen and these superstars in the NFL. If you think those guys are cool, um, imagine the guys – who write their checks. These are the owners. These guys didn't even play football at the level that that the NFL players played. So my advice is also hop in the vehicle and ride it out. Don't ever let anybody tell you you should get out of this, this, this lane because you can get out in college and be a good college coach, a GA, you can be a trainer. You can get out after college and be a lawyer, an agent, um, a GM, an owner. There's so many different ways you can still be around this beautiful sport. So when you have these teachers or parents or older people in your life saying, man, you're not playing, just quit. Those are people that gave up on their dreams and they're trying to project on you. Awesome, man. That's good well, stuff, hey, awesome. man. We appreciate you taking a couple minutes with us. Congratulations Show. again. Shout out to the Browns. To meet you. Thank you. <laughs> We'd like to welcome back to the Dogs Podcast, now a veteran of the show, yeah. Coach Stump Mitchell, 2024 National High School Hall of Fame inductee, now added to the resume. Congratulations, Coach, on the great honor. Thanks, I appreciate it. You might, can you scoot just a little closer? Yeah, there we there go. There we go. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, um... I just wanted to ask, you know, the, the, it's a high school uh, Hall of Fame. How important is it to continue to grow the game at the younger levels, especially, especially at that high school level? Uh, it's, it's everything, you know, teaching these young men and also young women because you got flag football. At some point in time, you're going to see a flag football game played before uh, the Super Bowl. Mm. That's going to happen. The sport is growing and uh, people love to see it. Uh, but it's, it's everything, you know, to be able to have the proper technique, uh, the proper equipment, all that they need in order to make it successful. And just teaching them the fundamentals of football is important because I don't care uh, how dangerous sports are, people are still going to play them. So yeah. I think the, the NFL is doing a tremendous job in terms of uh, trying to make it safer for players and the lower levels are practicing those habits and s- supplying them with the right gear for the most part. Actually, speaking of the gear, just to kind of piggyback off that, we just did an interview with the CEO or the owners of Guardian Caps. 
So did you have experience? You had experience in practice and training camps and stuff with the players wearing those guardian caps on the helmets? Yes, this was last year was the first year that the uh, running backs had to to uh, okay. use them. I think the linebackers was using them all the time, but that was definitely the first year of the running backs having to practice with them. What was the feedback from some of the players on on those caps? Uh, I mean, I think once once you get accustomed to anything, you can deal with it. Yeah. Okay. Because they were talking about how they're implementing those at the younger levels, and it's helping ease some of the concerns of parents and everything you know with the safety of the game so i think that's i think that's good for the longevity of the game yeah absolutely so i wanted to talk to you this is the the you were inducted into the high school hall of fame this weekend do you have a a certain like a special memory or um like your favorite memory from a high school game was like there a, a big game or a game winning touchdown just what's like your your most vivid most awesome memory from a high school game uh, I mean, spot. <laughs> for, the, for, the, no, for the most part, it's probably we played this school by the name of Fitzgerald. I'm from Georgia, and we ended up losing the ball game. Uh, I think I rushed for maybe 120 yards, but I think I had about 180 call back. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, that was very, very disappointing uh, for us to lose that game and for me to have more yards called back than than I did uh, that uh, that actually counted, <laughs> but uh, we were on the road, and I'm from a small country town. For the most part, we always had to travel two to three hours to play to play our region games. So you're gonna be back in Dover tomorrow, meeting a bunch of Browns fans. You still have huge tons of support here in Ohio and Browns country, and I guess a lot of people. Probably, what are is are you are you just taking a year off? Are you just are you, what 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 what's on the agenda for you? What are you what are you looking to be doing? Well, I'm just taking it one day at a time. It's life. Uh, right now, I'm you know I'm out of a job, and that's all well and good. I think the Browns uh, we were so close last year. Every move they make, I think, is a is a calculated move in order to get over the hump. Uh, sometimes you a part of coming in sometimes you're a part of going out but you understand that it's all about trying to get to the next level i know we we in all of browns nation super appreciative of everything you brought to the organization we love having you here we love it being on the show this has been awesome i wanted to ask before we get you out of here we don't want to take up your whole night if you had to give one piece of advice to a young high school kid out right there who's trying to make it to the next level? What's like one piece, as a coach, who's coach at the highest level, what's one piece of advice you would give to them? Well, it doesn't matter if you're that superstar. It doesn't matter if uh, if you're that kid that they don't believe in. It doesn't matter if you're that kid that gets cut. Uh, don't worry about the coaches liking you. Uh, just have great work, work ethics. And don't think that man is going to determine your destination, whether you're successful or not. Uh, that's all predetermined by God. So don't hold grudges against nobody. If um, I know my high school coach, he, he actually cut me. Uh, he sent me back down to the JV level uh, when the guys that I was equal with was playing uh, on the varsity. Now, I'm not being conceited, but I was better than some of those guys. I was smaller. I was smaller. And uh, he held that against me. I couldn't take that. I really couldn't take that. Being at a lower level than the other guys. So I moved away from my hometown. And uh, I was running back in Georgia. I moved to Miami to stay with my, to live with my aunt. Well, there in the ninth grade, you play, you play uh, club ball. Uh, I was playing at Northernless Junior High School. Well, I, I went out to play football. I was a running back in Georgia. They had us run 40s. After about 20 yards, they told me I could stop. <laughs> oh, you, you, could go, you could go over there where the linebackers are. <laughs> linebackers. <laughs> so I'm playing linebacker in the ninth grade. I'm playing linebacker now in the 10th grade at Northwestern High School. Linebacker 
and offensive tackle. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah, linebacker and offensive tackle. And uh, so um, I got good hands. I'm playing tackle. We run a tackle eligible play. It's raining, and somebody's not paying attention. They're holding that down box, and I slide into it, and uh, I just destroy my shoulder. Oh. I have to have surgery, and uh, my aunt said I couldn't play football no more because I'm making her uh, insurance go up. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved back to Georgia, and the coach that was there moved away. He took the starting quarterback with him, and now one of his assistants – was a head coach who was the JV coach when I was first playing and he knew I could play. So I went back uh, in the running back's role. Nobody ever knew that I wasn't playing running back for two years. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the okie doke on him. Yeah. <laughs> Must have had good technique. <laughs> he went tackle, man. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, hey, we really appreciate you sitting down. I want you to go enjoy the party, not be stuck here with us all night. Yes, It was awesome to get to talk to you again. We appreciate you taking the time, and good luck with everything going forward. Thanks. Good luck to you guys as well. Thanks. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by Manly Bands. Dog Pack. If you followed the show for a while, you know that I recently got married. I got my wedding band at Manly Bands. Now, I opted for something a little more simple, so I just got a plain simple gold polished band for manly bands, but that's not everybody. And I'm telling you, they've got so many cool different designs and materials available. They've got stuff. They've got bands made out of Jack Daniels, whiskey barrels, meteorites, even dinosaur bones. It's so cool. Just head to manlybands.com. Check out the selection. See what they have. They've even got build your own bands. If you want to make a custom style band for yourself. And right now use promo code dogs, D-A-W-G-S at manlybands.com when you check out and you'll get 25% off your order. 25% is a big deal. So make sure if you guys are are looking for a new wedding band, uh, Blake mentioned last week or two on the show that, you know, he's lost a lot of weight in the last year. And so his wedding band is a little too big for him. So he's thinking about getting a new one. And I told him, I said, just go to Manly Band, see what they got. And the 25% off your order is such a great deal. You really can't beat it. So at least go check it out, see what they have. They've got some really cool stuff. And again, promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, if you decide to buy one and you'll get 25% off of that purchase. If you don't know your ring size, you can order a free ring size guide. They'll ship it straight to you. You can punch out the little rings and put them on your finger to see which size fits you best. And then every single um, band you order comes with a free silicone ring for whenever you want to work out or go swimming or whatever you need a silicone band for, you get one for free shipped with your purchase of a Manly Band from manlybands.com. So check it out. Again, manlybands.com. Use promo code DOGS for 25% off your order. We're excited to welcome to the show 2024 National High School Hall of Fame inductee Ted Ginn Jr. You guys all know him as Ohio State legend and NFL veteran. Ted, it's awesome to have you on the show. This is like a dream come true for yes. me, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to kick off the show, uh, kick off the talks. How important is it to continue to grow the game of football at these younger levels, especially at the high school level as we're at a National High School Hall of Fame induction? Well, I think uh, growing the level of IQs, it kind of starts at the age of like eight, nine, ten years old. Um, right now, getting to the high school level is almost like being in college. You know, um, you almost got to come in ready, um, especially with the with the new way of the world is going with the NILs and all the kids are getting things in the little league area that's making the high school almost be like college, Mm -hmm. where college is almost like pros now. Yeah. So you have to scale back from when I was coming up where, you know, you was kind of still learning in high school, where now you got to kind of learn from almost 10 years old to 14. Because at 14, you're coming into a whole other deal with the way they have this thing set up now. Yeah. 
yeah, it's the the way the game is going these days. It's kind of the college game now. I mean, like you said, it's it's basically like the pros. Yeah, and now like news is coming out that colleges can actually pay players, not just NIL. So the way the, the game has changed so much, just even it seems like you were just in college yesterday, you know, and, and how much has changed. <laughs> yeah, it just show you that this hasn't changed really. Mm-hmm. It just got where it's mainstream. It's main. Yeah, yeah. It, it's. It's easier now. You know, we got in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coaches got fired for it. Where now it's like we're looking out for the universities. We're looking out for the coaches. We're looking out for the players. But when we was doing it, we was looking out. We was getting looked at wrong mm-hmm. for taking a handshake or mm-hmm. asking for somebody to pay us because our family is struggling. But now it's just like, oh, this is the new way of life. And you know, it's it's for it's for everybody, but it's for certain. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we just I'm just happy that we're able to get a little bit out of the deal than to get nothing. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I was a huge proponent of figuring out a way to get people paid. You know, the university should be making billions Correct. while you guys are looking for uh, a free lunch at the commissary or whatever it yeah. is. It, you know, and then you got the marketplace. Then you got compliance that come in like the FBI <laughs> yeah. and, and, and take every good connection that you have away from you. Yeah. But then how do I rejuvenate my, how do I be better on Saturday with only limited things right. mm-hmm. that you're only going to give me throughout the week? Oh, 100%. Like, it's tough. Um, so obviously you had a great high school career. This is the ho- high school hall of fame induction. What is your, your favorite or your best memory from a high school game? Uh, I think I was playing Perry. Okay. Ashland Perry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just right on the street. Yeah. Um, they had, there was a wing T type team at the time where I think everybody was under five, eight. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about quarterback, fullback. <laughs> um, but I was playing quarterback. It was my senior year. And um, I had a I had a run there where uh, I reverse field, reverse field, knocked off some tackles, got a little got a little assist from a, a, a tackle, and <laughs> got into the end zone. Uh, so I I just think my 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 senior year I had a lot of different highlights because I was kind of like by myself. I wouldn't really say like I had a team, but as far as all the other years, I had a Pierre Woods, I had a. Dante Whitner, I had a Darius Hiley. It was my time to shine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about high school. You, you had an extremely impressive defensive career yes. in high school. You were uh, USA Today's Defensive Player of the Year. So, were you better on offense or defense? And, and Ohio State recruited you at DB, I believe. Correct. Then, how did you make that transition to wide receiver? Then, like, it seemed like so seamlessly. Well, you know, I, I kind of. Went down there as a gamble. Okay. As a Chris Gamble. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So uh, when I went in, I was kind of like already under that tutelage of how they was doing with Gamble. Only thing about it, I was very small, and I couldn't hit like Gamble. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was a, I would say I was a probably more, I ain't going to say talented, but I was more ready on offense my freshman year. Me going down there, I ain't going to lie, I had Matt Johnson. He was like the fourth string running back at the time. <laughs> and we did hoot and holler. And he ran me over three times. <laughs> <laughs> and that made it clear, like, okay, we know he can cover. We know he fast. But in this Big Ten, do we really help us? Mm-hmm. Because the the years before that, when you play Wisconsin, you play Minnesota, you play Penn State, and they seen seven at corner, they sent linemen at him to wear him down on offense. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. yep. So with me not having the body structure that you would want to have as a corner, then you had Ashton Yobody. Uh, EJ Underwood, Dustin Fox, uh, Tyler Everett, Dante Winter, Nate Sally. Like, you had so many guys that was good. No matter how you wanted to put it, 
They was good at their position as far as size, body, and IQ. So on the offensive side, you only had Santonio <laughs> and Brandon Childress. Like, that was like really your guys. Roy Hall was coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devin Joy was, was coming up. You know, they was mm-hmm. still trying to figure these guys out. And it was just like, hey, you're the number one guy really on defense, not so much on offense, but you're the number one player in the country. We had just lost um, a guy, Darius Holly, from my high school through through the red shirt deal. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So it was like, I can't red shirt you at all. Uh, okay. And then it's like a slap in your face because you're a blue chip. You are you all this stuff for you not to be playing. It's like, what are we doing? Right. So they gave me 10 plays on offense before the first game of the season. And that's all I knew. <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> it's like the Ted Ginge in your package. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it kind of went three years after that because you come out with the bubble. I'm the first guy to create the bubble. No. I don't. Tell me somebody else. No. Gym formation. Mm-hmm. That was the that was the bubble. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I created the bubble. And then everything was a package because every year it was like, okay, we, we might go try you back on defense. Okay. Really? You know what I'm saying? Until my last year where we had Michael Jenkins and mm. all these guys that was really coming in. That's when I, <laughs> excuse me, really started seeing the game change as individualized. Like, you got real corners coming in that can play as freshmen, just like you got real receivers that can come in. You didn't have the guy that's in between. Right. Yep. Offense or defense. Like, you had guys that really play certain positions and it just show you what's going on now. Uh, that's super interesting because I guarantee you no Buckeyes fans knew they kept teasing you with cornerback throughout your career. <laughs> I, me growing up, I was like, he's just throw wide him, receiver. Throw him the ball. Yeah, get him the, well, get him the rock. It was me, actually, because I was a corner at heart. Okay. Yeah. So I understood, okay, play. But the next year, I want to go to corner. Yeah. You got to realize yeah. at that time, I'm thinking about all the Deion Sanders, yeah. Charles Wilson. Yep. Like, oh. These fast guys return punts, return kickoffs. All I got to do is cover. I really ain't got to hit you. Mm, yeah. Then I have to go on the other side and worry about this guy coming downhill, Dante Winter hitting you, and <laughs> Nate Sally, and all these guys get free licks on you. That's way harder. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, so we're a Browns podcast. So I wanted to, to ask you, kind of tie it into the Browns a little bit. You were in Carolina when Ken Dorsey was there. What can you tell us about Ken Dorsey and, and what he brings to an offense? Like, what can we expect to see? Is he a fiery guy? What can we expect well, out of Ken well, Dorsey? Well, one thing about Ken Dorsey that I, 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 I can say is he's going to – Harp on what he knows work. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And put a system around his players that he has in the building. If you go look at the 2015 team at Carolina, we give you an idea of who Ken is. Mm -hmm. When you go and you take certain superstars Mm -hmm. that they felt were superstars away, Mm -hmm. and you use the guys that you just have, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. We went to Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't throw nothing but outs. <laughs> I actually wanted to talk about that. So you played with the Heisman Trophy winner in college in Troy Smith. Played with the MVP, Cam Newton in Carolina. You're the common denominator, right? Yeah, like always. They, they should buy you, they should buy you lunch, right? Like you, you I've been an X Factor <laughs> my whole life. Yeah. I'm just being real. I ran the South for six years on two different teams. Um Every team that I went to in the league, we changed the dynamics of that team. Every every year in college, we changed that dynamic of that team. I just always been the big play X factor guy, and I always took that mold. I mean that role. Oh, no matter where I was at. And how much of that came from what you learned in high school? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything come from me being able to sit in the field. And see guys play multiple positions that really doesn't have a position. Uh-huh. Being versatile. And that's what football is all about. Yeah. And then what we do now is we say, oh, he only is this or he only is that. And then when that don't happen, then here come mental mental illness. Here come the 
the the the people in the in the in the in the news. Uh, we spend extra money, mm-hmm. get in trouble with women, different things like that because we didn't took the natural ability of talking on the mic and typing and just saying you can only type and don't talk. Yeah, you like. What's going on here? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think with Ken and the type of guys that you have, you have a solid run game with, with Chubb. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You bring somebody else in there with him. You know, I, I don't know if Kareem back. Uh, I don't no, I don't think they brought so. uh, Dante yeah. Foreman. Yeah. So you bring another guy in. If you go look and see what he created in the run game in 2015, mm-hmm. and then you have this – Got Coop and uh, uh, and, uh Jerry Judy. Jerry Hello. Judy. So you got your slow and fast. Yeah. If you, <laughs> you really want to say it like that. Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not taking away from nobody. Mm-hmm. No, but they're good at what they do. But they're yeah. good at what they do. I yep. stop real good and I bypass you real good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the tie in is there. Yeah. And Joe yeah. He, he, that's Greg Olson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I just see that. As much as you think that I'm saying basic, mm-hmm. it's really like the shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he maximizes his guys. For he, sure. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. he, and what they can do. Yep. And if you go in there with with Winston, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You got Winston, you got uh, Watts. Watts. Yep. You got everybody that almost emulates a 2015 Carolina Panthers. Yep. You're right. Yeah, that's a good point, and uh, hopefully we get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, uh, me too, because I'm, I'm I'm wishing for that too. Help, help my city. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so one last thing before we get you out of here, so you can go join the party. If you had to give a, a kid in high school right now who's trying to make it to the next level, what's one piece of advice you would give them? Stay a kid. Mm. Yeah. The thing the thing that's going on right now is we're trying to move faster than what our bodies allow. Right now, I have my young daughter uh-huh. that's running track. It's only like her third year. This year, I say, hey, I'm not going to chase AAU. I'm not going to chase all the things that this, these uh, telephones and TVs and everything is showing her. Somewhere down the line, you have to put in some type of work <laughs> and relax. Yeah. There's no way that... Sometimes you got certain kids that's just above Mm -hmm. average, you know, or above what taking workouts or being on time or just I'm going to do this every day to be great. So you have certain kids like that, that you have to take that away from them. Mm -hmm. Then you have certain kids that don't have that, that you have to instill in them. So you have to figure out what goes good with that kid. Because we all individuals. Yep. And I would tell all individuals that be a kid, enjoy your family, because once you leave from out of here, you don't you don't have nobody to piggyback on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we all don't chase the money. You know what I'm saying? Yep. A lot of these kids are chasing money, going to certain spots for money and then have to get into the the portal and different things like that. I believe you get in the portal, you're not worthy. Yeah. I hate to say it like that, but look how many guys I set behind. Look how my future changed every year, and I still made it. Yep, yep. yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you got people that's changing their future every year and never make it. Mm, that's a great point. Yep. Well, awesome. Uh, Ted, we appreciate you sitting down with us, taking time. Again, like dream come true for me. Yeah, uh, for sure. Watching you play and just this has been surreal. So thank you for taking the time to sit no down problem, with no us. No problem. Thanks for having yep, me. Thanks a lot. And congratulations. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Yep. Yep. We're very excited to welcome 2024 National High School Football Hall of Fame inductee Bob Golick to the show. This is an honor sitting here with a Cleveland Browns legend. Um, thank you for taking the time to sit with us. That sounds so weird. <laughs> Darn, <it shouldn't. laughs> I didn't no. even know that, that like the high school Hall of Fame thing was a, like a thing. Yeah. yeah. 
No, uh, we're from 20 minutes down the road, and I didn't know it was a thing. Well, it is only the second year. Yes. So um, it's new. Yeah. yeah. Which is why we're here, to try to help get the word out, because I do think it was a really cool event, and, I, and we talked. To, we had a chance to talk to Nate Burleson, and I was talking to him a little bit about it. I thought it was so cool to have a lot of you ex-NFL guys up there who played at the highest level on the same stage as guys who have been teachers for 30 years, coaching high school kids, and like just seeing kind of like, they have reverence for you guys playing football at the highest level, but the reverence you guys have for them also as, as educators and coaches. It's so cool to see. You know, I see a lot of the players often, not often, but, you know, talk to them once in a while. But the people I never saw were, you know, the, the coaches. Mm-hmm. And these were, like, such important coaches to, uh, to, to football, high school yeah. football. And, uh, you know, it it just seemed like they were, I don't want to say you can't talk to them, but, I mean, I really felt, you know, it would be an honor to go and speak with them. Mm -hmm. Then they came over and started shooting the breeze with me, and I'm like, (laughs) oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's probably how they felt about you. Like, should I go talk to this guy? (laughs) Yeah, so it was, was, for me, and and nothing against the players, but for me, the coaches were the the big draw for me. Yeah. They were such cool. Big time high school football, Ohio high school football coaches there today, too. Yes, yeah. Used to be, uh, high school football used to be uh, Ohio, Western Pennsylvania, Florida, Texas, Texas, and Southern California. Yep. Yep. Now it's just Ohio. No. (laughs) Northeast Ohio is, uh, it's very, still, it's still very important here. It's still big. So I wanted to be in the, the high school Hall of Fame induction. I wanted to get your idea. How important is it to continue to grow the game of football at these younger levels, especially at that high school level? Uh, I, I, I'm going to say something, and I don't know if it's true or not. It just, <laughs> it just seems like they're trying to change the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it starts with the, the CTE and the head injuries and concussions. Which I never got a concussion. I just got my bell rung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this fact is ringing right now. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It, it, I've, my, my son, when he was like 10, 11, played flag football. Mm-hmm. So I think any way you do this coming up, if, if you learn the game, mm-hmm. It works out pretty good. But after he played flag football for a couple of years, he couldn't wait to get in the hitting yeah, and, yeah. and get the pads on and stuff. So so we went that way. So, yeah, things like this, I, I, mean, no, I, I, I don't know if this is going to motivate people to go play high school football, but uh-huh. certainly the way things are going, it's, I, I think it'll, it'll be a nice little extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, looking back at your high school days, do you have a like a favorite memory or like best highlight from a high school game when you played back in the day? Like, is there anything that sticks out? Like, you you asked the prom queen out oh. afterwards. Or- <laughs> oh, oh, a game thing. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Mike Rosola and just a couple of guys. We we found a bottle of wine and no. helped. <laughs> um, you know what? We had one of the things that I do remember was, was, was there. I was, uh, I don't know, I guess captain of the football team, and so they had we had the homecoming, and, but we were playing Collinwood, and Collinwood had they were gonna like come and fight us, so they moved the the game from Friday night to Saturday afternoon, and it was raining, like torrential rain, and so the the. Homecoming queen in her corner, just like like soaked dogs, and were <laughs> and I got mud all over me, and so they you know, pop over there. So I had to run over there and put my arm around her, and then go. Sorry, I got to go back and play football now. <laughs> uh, Multitasking. That's that's good. Uh, so we want to talk about your time with the Browns. Uh, three consecutive Pro Bowls in eighty five, eighty six, and eighty seven. Do you have any any memories from those those seasons? Obviously, playing at the highest level. You know, I thought it would look it would have looked better in red, but uh, uh, it it really didn't flatter me very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I ever wanted to wish I was in the NFC. <laughs> uh, I was skinnier when I was with the Patriots, so you know it looked okay. Yeah. You know, the the cool thing was is that after. 
after the game's over. Well, during the week, one guy used to be Jack Lambert. And they called it Lambert's Garden. And Lambert would give the, the guy that runs the, the, the place, uh, the locker rooms and everything, would give him money. They would go buy a bunch of beer. So after the game's over and everybody's taken off, they will, you know, some of us guys can just hit the shower, go back and just sit there and drink beer <laughs> and shoot the breeze and just talk about stuff. And the one year that uh, I was there and Lambert didn't wasn't there, and the guy goes, it's Golick's Garden now. Oh, <laughs> and nice. Says, and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And they, well, nobody else would give us money. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, that was, it was cool. I mean, I, I just remember sitting back there with Max Montoya and, and just, uh, uh, what is it, um, Rulon, was it Rulon Jones? Well, Ket, Ek, Ek, well a, a number of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. All popular guys. But it was it was cool. And, of course, we all got yelled at because our wives were out there waiting for us. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. That's, you know. Happy uh, wife, happy life, except for during Pro Bowl week. Yes, that's right. Yes. I told you to go get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I got a crazy story from probably about seven years ago with you. Uh -oh. I, I've, uh, I've met you already. Uh -oh. but, so I was at a Browns game. They did the... Um, was a 25 year reunion of the 86 Browns team. Oh yeah. So everybody's up there. Um, it was the first time I ever took my wife, my wife now to a Browns game. We sat front row dog pound, paid a bunch of money for tickets, you know, and the team wasn't that great then. <laughs> um, but you and Webster slaughter walked by and high fived me and my wife. And I was like, beyond myself. I was like, God, oh, you know, it's, what you're saying, it's Bob Golick. And she's like, I have no clue who any of these guys are. And I'm like, I wish I, you know, I wouldn't have expected anything. I get that a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I, no I was, but um, it was, I remember that being a big deal. And then Chomps, you know, the Browns mascot passed me by. So I always used to tell people, you know, Chomps, not a great mascot, but Bob Golick's out here just high five and people in the crowd. But, you know, uh, I, I get more, I get more uh, people going, Say by the bell of college years. Oh, oh, he's got a question for you. Oh. And I'm like, well, yeah, I, I did that for one year. I <laughs> beat the crap out of my body from high school and <laughs> high school and college and little league and pros and one year and say by the bell of college year and everybody's like, what's Tiffany like? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I have. <laughs> Yeah, I, go ahead, go ahead and I, ask it. Growing up, I wanted, I put it in here, I wanted to personally thank you for entertaining me every morning while I waited for the bus. I watched Saved by the Bell every just sounds single weird. day. Yeah. Yes. It came out as a, that look was very loaded. It wasn't, it was on TV. Uh, maybe that made it worse. I almost, I actually almost killed her one, one scene. We were shooting this one, uh, one episode where I actually rescued a mouse that it was being the lab was testing on, okay. and I said, "This is stupid. You can't." He's a cute little mouse, so I I stole him, and I was hiding him, and then I came back and I was in the middle room between the guys and the girls. I was in the common room, and I go, "I said the mouse is gone," and Screech was looking around for it. And then they heard, we heard from the other room. We heard uh, uh, the girls scream, <laughs> and we go. Eh, if his name was Little Exy. And so I ran, and they said, just hit the door as hard as you can. So I hit it, and it ripped off the hinges, and the door flew right at Tiffany, who was laying on, on her bed. And if she hadn't jumped to the side onto the floor, she probably would have... Every 90s kid oh, who is so happy you didn't kill <laughs> Tiffany Thiessen. So... The, for the for the scene, they uh, decided, okay, we're gonna put hinges on the bottom. <laughs> so when I when I hit it, it just went bump. <laughs> Boy, awesome. that looks realistic. <laughs> have you just a, have you do you stay in contact with any of these guys, or have you talked, or is it is it a bit basically the every, show is done is over every twenty years or so? So you know, I don't, I don't. Yeah, I really haven't. I used to see Screech once in a while. I'd go to his. I, I went to his comedy uh, comedy store, whatever he was, you know, his, does those comedy club things. Oh, yes. They're just so raunchy. Yes. Yeah. He got into some weird things. Yes. He did get into some weird stuff. <laughs> even, even my wife was like, she goes, oh, 
I, I feel like his mother. He's just, <laughs> I am embarrassed that he's saying these words. <laughs> but but so you know, Mark, uh, Mark Paul was uh, once in a while. Mario Lopez loved. He was a uh, he wrestled in high school and mm-hmm. lived uh, stuff. So he was a really good guy. And the the other two girls. Who cares? Tiffany was there. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I, I've been wanting to ask you this question since 2006, so I'm happy I got to sit down with you here. Uh, real, we'll just talk Browns real quick. Are you excited for the season? Yes. What, 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 what do you think it's, the team's going to be like? Are you happy with the, the Stefanski Andrew Berry uh, extensions? I'll tell you at the end of the season. Okay, <laughs> we fair. can take that. You know, there've been so many, so many changes, so many things going around. I mean. First off, I was I was really, really ticked off about the whole Flacco thing. Okay. okay. Just from a from a a loyalty standpoint, when mm-hmm. I mean, a guy came in uh, and just took us to the playoffs, mm-hmm. and I understand that they wanted a certain type of offense, so they started bringing in Jameis Winston mm-hmm. and I, I just guys that would would work. So. Now they have uh, they they have the guys they want a quarterback, running back. I don't know, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. I, you know I, last I saw uh, Kareem a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and I said, "Any idea?" He goes, "Not yet," mm-hmm. but he's out. And so the defense looks pretty good. Yep. I mean, they got some DTs up front, some mm-hmm. big guys that should be able to hold the middle, which. And the, one of the things that, that they really have to do, though, that, and I hate to sound like I'm preaching, but they've got to learn to tackle. You oh, know, yeah. when, I was, when I was taught and you, the first guy hits the, the ball carrier, the second guy can come in and take a swat of the ball. Yeah. And if you watch games now, all these guys are swatting the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they're going to hit the ball, trying to knock it loose, and they haven't even wrapped the guy up yet. And they yes. end up running another 15 yards. Yep. And I just was like, you know, my dad taught me, you know, you wrap your arms and you you grab cloth, you grab belt, you grab mm. fat, you grab <laughs> skin. It doesn't matter. Grab anything and just pull it. Yep. Pull it down. So. Yeah, no, that makes total sense because you're right. They are, you see them going and trying to and strip it, that ball immediately without even trying to wrap. it's not even just them. I mean, it's a, a lot of the teams. Do oh, that. yeah. I, I think it's just the kids wanting to make the big play. Mm-hmm. Just wanting to make the big play and all that. So, but I, I, I kind of like it. I kind of like the way it looks. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I haven't seen them work. We are practice the other day, but they were just throwing the ball yeah. around, nothing. Uh, I, I can't wait to see them in the preseason, although preseason kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hated preseason, man. I think everybody does. <laughs> well, well, they shouldn't. What do they got? They're, they're co- the collective bargain agreement says they're only allowed to have ten, uh, ten. What is it? Eight practices, uh, part of a double session, mm. yeah. in full contact. Yeah. And we were like, we were double session, full contact for five weeks. Yeah. yeah. Say for months. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. just. It was. It was incredible. Every once in a while, you know, we'd lose like three or four guys to heat stroke. <laughs> then they'd say, oh, we're going to take the afternoon off. <laughs> then they'd come back and go, you know what? No, we're just going to move it to a night practice. <laughs> you know, let me ask you real quick, though, that, that, about like the I feel like there's been more injuries in yeah. recent years. And, you know, and, and a lot of these like lower body soft tissue issue kind of yeah. injuries. And do you think it stems from the lack of? Yes. Ex- OK, because you're not you're not. There's think, no contact extensively during the summer. There's two. There's two things. One, but when game four of the preseason, I they usually they pull the starters out and yep. put everybody else in. I always talk to coaches and they let me go at least a half because I don't want to go into the regular season rusty. Right. Yeah. You know, it's kind of cold, cold and off the cuff like that. So, so they put me in it and it just it felt good. To, to be hit and I think that I, I think that being hit I mean it's not something you normally do but you get used to it after mm-hmm. a while I think the more they do it the more they would they would feel like hey we're you know we're getting ready but it's um but it, it this it, it just is um 
the other side of that too goes like this. There is a, I, I think there's a psychological standpoint to this too. I think that if you're not used to hitting and being hit all the time, then you, you know, the, then maybe you're not used to as much pain. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not calling them wusses or anything. I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying these guys are, they, they're, their idea of when to come out is probably different than ours. For sure. You know, we would, you know, we would tear a, a muscle in our calf muscle. I broke my, I broke my forearm in 86 against the Steelers and I played uh, a quarter before that and then then the bone popped through the skin and oh jeez yeah. oh, <laughs> then that was it then so but but I wanted to play I didn't want to I didn't want to give somebody else my my position mm-hmm. and so I'm not saying that they're 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 weak for doing this I just think their perception of of the hitting and the pain and everything um, is different than 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 we because mm-hmm. we just like you said five weeks just all, all, every single day when when my son was playing at uh, Solon High School I was showing him how to hit the, the tackling dummy and I hit it one time and I rolled and I rolled off onto the grass and I thought I, I thought I had died <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't I hadn't hit the ground in probably like 20 years <laughs> And I'm going, oh, that's that's like a, a learned response or something. <laughs> yeah. I hit there was no there was no smooth come up and you know, it was it was just bad. I said, eh, that was a good one, Gage. Let's uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> let's watch you do it <laughs> yeah. the rest of the day. Awesome. Well, uh, hey, we don't want to take up your whole night. We want yeah, you to be able to go enjoy absolutely. the party with everybody. Are you we- trying to get rid of me? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. You can take my spot on this show. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> but, uh, we, we appreciate you sitting down with us. And uh, it was great to meet Huge you. Huge honor. And yeah. thank you so much for being here with I us. I appreciate yeah. it. And congratulations yep. on yeah. the induction. Absolutely. Thank yes. you. Yep. It was very cool. I'm still talking about uh, them possibly doing a uh, haul of the pretty good. Yeah. 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 I thought that was a good idea. We'll, we'll set up a podcast. Yeah. yeah. We'll, do the, we'll do the uh, first I appreciate year. that. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, the one thing about, I, somebody, I, I get my, sometimes my callers go, you should be in a hall of fame. I said, no, no, no. I, I don't have stats. I don't, I'm a nose tackle. I said, maybe college football. But then I, then I said, I don't, I don't deserve it. So, but, as the years go by, I start seeing the guys that are getting put in, and I'm thinking, man, I kicked his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I still don't think I deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, but, uh, you know. Like, if, that guy's in there. Let, let's do deductive reasoning. <laughs> if I kick his ass and I shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, where should he be? <laughs> That's a good point. It's the ball. It's it the hall of average. And the yes. hall of Slightly average. Slightly farther up the hall of <laughs> highway a little yeah. bit longer. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys great, so Bob. much. Pleasure, guys. Thank Appreciate you, Bob. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? but then you get that little crash not long after, Danger Coffee's patent-pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. Head to DangerCoffee.com, use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over, so you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com, code DOGS. We're very excited to welcome 2024 National High School Hall of Fame inductee Eddie George to the show. Eddie, this is legit a dream come true for me. (laughs) I've been telling like this is... um, This is... 
this is uh, an incredible honor to have you on and um Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Man, not a problem, man. What a hell of a day, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was an awesome night. Um, it was uh, impactful. It was uh, uh, moving. The, the various stories you heard from each inductee. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was long, but it didn't feel long. You know, it was, it was, it was well worth it to hear um, people just recognize their loved ones, um, uh, take time to appreciate the people that really impacted them throughout their careers. Um, just hearing from the, the Hall of Fame coaches, mm -hmm. you know, just the amount of coaches that have coached in Northeast Ohio. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. And the impact they've had on football in general. Like, we're talking about the Stoops and, and Rabel and uh, Blue Holtz. I mean, just the list goes on. We're talking about some real guys and um, – it just makes you feel proud to be a part of that. So, you know, just to be inducted with the, the group of men um, uh, for the second class for the National uh, High School Hall of Fame um, is just remarkable. I thought it was a very cool dynamic up on stage. You have college and NFL legends on the sharing a stage with. 30 year teacher and high school football coaches yeah. and and there's reverence on both sides oh, yeah. like they they're, they're talking about how they can't believe they're on the stage with with these legends and you guys are talking about how much of an honor it is to share the stage with these guys so i yeah. thought that was super cool to see i enjoyed every speech um like you said it was long but it didn't feel long i thought there's a lot of cool stuff in there yeah i mean in those moments you got to savor because you you don't know what tomorrow brings um and to have again that 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 stays full of that, that, that rich knowledge and the, the history, the stories, um, the backstories, um, how, how you got there um, was, was, was just once in a lifetime. And I'm, I'm praying that the word gets out, people hear about it, it becomes a, a, a thing that people want to come to Canton for. Mm -hmm. um, also with the, the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, I've been inducted into various Hall of Fames, but this one was very special because of who was on me. Eric Dickerson. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 And who wasn't here was Orlando Pace and yeah. Charles mm -hmm. Woods and Billy Sims, yeah. uh, Coach Cooper. Uh, I mean, just a who's who of football. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, like I'm really pre Andre Rising. I mean, come <laughs> on, man. And, uh, it, you know, this is a, this is a must must see event and if you are a, a, a football aficionado or even if you're not mm -hmm. um coming to canton just to see the rich history here the hallowed grounds the hall of fame and just what they've been doing with this development is is an attraction unto itself yeah and um i'm really proud i can't wait to come back next year just as an alum and and, and support it as best yep. i can I know it's been like a pinch me day. Like every time I see somebody else, I'm like, this can't be real life. Yeah. This can't be real life. So yeah. um, as a coach yourself now, how important is it to continue to grow the game at the high school level for, for just yeah. to continue to grow young men? Well, that's, that's the foundation. That is the, the crux of it all. I mean, you don't get an opportunity to play college football without high school football. And unfortunately, you know, where college football is going, high school football is becoming less and less a priority. And that's scary to me. Mm -hmm. um, now they're talking about having games on Friday nights. I mean, that should be it's, that's it's, high school football, it's high yep. school football. Like Friday night lights is for high school football. Um, now you're fringing upon that. And now we're looking at how the, the portal has affected high school players where now you have to be a, a made ready freshman to go in. You can get you know recruited by Ohio State. You know, these kids that aren't necessarily getting the opportunities are kind of like tweeners. They're still developing, growing. They're not getting those opportunities. And I'm seeing them come to my, my level, which is fine. But they have aspirations of playing, you know, major college football. Um, and it's my job, and as a head coach, uh, I'm going to develop them to that. So, you know, it, it's in some regards. I mean, we got hit with the pandemic. Um, it was an influx of, of high school kids just out there looking for homes um, and then you introduce the transfer portal and, and of course NIL and it's um, it's the wild wild west yeah. so we got to be conscious of what high school football means it teaches young men how to persevere through adversity it teaches you teamwork it teaches you to be selfless it teaches you 
um, the great habits of, of what it takes to become a champion to not think about the, 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 the destination in terms of the end result, but more or less the, the process, you know, and what it takes to get there by um, all the small things, what doesn't require talent, being on time, um, showing being first, first in and last to leave, um, you know, uh, all those things, be comfortable, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. All the things that that I had to do as a, as, a, as a young man, as a football player, to be developed into what I am today, you know, these kids have to go through that. And high school is really is a part of that. So we've got to recognize the high school kids. We've got to recognize high school football and hold reverence to that and keep it sacred because there's nothing like playing high school football on a Friday night. Nothing at all like it. No. And I mean, we talk all the time, like, you know, being in high school and we would have our lifting sessions all all school year long, not just during the season. So, you know, you're going through the winter and the spring and mm-hmm. then all our buddies are coming into school an hour and a half later. Yeah. But we're there at the crack of dawn to work out. And it just kind of sets that tone of, well, this is what it's going to be like when you get to college, when you get to, you know, your professional life right. work, like you have to be up, you have to be on time, you got to be accountable. Yeah. Uh, so just speaking back then on your own high school career, we, we got to hear your speech, which was great, by the way. Yeah, it was. Uh, but what did you have like a favorite memory from a game where you like like that really stands out in your memory where like you went off or, or just something that really stands out in your mind? Oh, man, it was a few games. Um, it was one game we're playing um, Woodbury Forest, our fierce rival mm-hmm. at Fork Union. And I was playing both ways. I was playing safety and running back. And it's like. 95 degrees out and going both ways. We didn't play at night games. We played in the day. And I am dead tired. I remember I gave up this big touchdown. It should have been an interception. And I gave up a touchdown. And I was the GOAT. Not in a good sense. <laughs> what was about to happen. And I remember saying, man, you know, this this is not going to end well. But I kept digging deeper. And I said, listen, I got I to gotta come back. I got to make this happen. Long story short, we're driving in for what was possibly going to be the winning touchdown. And I took a, um, a draw like 60 yards to the house <laughs> and, you know, redeemed myself. So in one in a span of 20 minutes, I go from being the scapegoat for the for, the, for a possible loss to becoming a hero for the game. And uh, that always stood out to me. Now, I went on to in my postgraduate year, have an amazing six game run. And I was on pace to, you know, rush for 2,000 yards that year and, you know, really put my name on the map for some big time stuff. But I was declared ineligible, unfortunately, because of a grow of, because of a gentleman's agreement. And um, they forfeited our games. But that year, I just was so laser focused on one thing. And one thing only was to get my grades, excellent grades, and to put a season together that, know that I can't be denied at all. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember my first game I had, we lost to uh, uh, Gonzaga at Gonzaga, but I rushed for like 289 yards or something like that. <laughs> then the next game was like 330, and then the next one was like 220. My lowest uh, output that over that six-game stretch was 180 yards. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, That's so, still a good a, game. Took a game yeah, off. So yeah. in about six <laughs> games, I had 15 touchdowns. 1300 yards <laughs> and they and they did an article on me and then um i remember byu coming in to like to see me at fork union i was like really flattered like oh my god it's coming together <laughs> you know uh louisville um uh howard stellenberger came by and his staff and and george welsh for virginia you know that's when terry kirby and those boys were were number one in the country at that time and uh, I was on cloud nine, man. I was I was in the barracks like the man. Like, hey, yo, Eddie, who's coming to see you today? I was like, I don't know. I love him. <laughs> so, but no, um, Ohio State was was the choice for me, for sure. Well, speaking a little bit about your Ohio State career, um, my dad was actually at the game where he set the single game rushing record against Illinois. Uh-huh. 314 yards, three touchdowns. 
just so you know, that's not your best game ever. You, <laughs> one time for the Titans on NFL 2K2, you rushed for 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns in one game. In one game. Wow. <laughs> that was, yeah. I was pretty good at the game. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> 1,500 uh, yards and 10 touchdowns? So I, the game was preset to eight-minute quarters, but I couldn't get you the stats I wanted in eight-minute quarters, so I bumped it up to 15, and I would catch every punt return, run it back to the one and me, <laughs> oh, and then God. give you the ball and they let can, you run for that's, 99 that's not football, <laughs> man. That's, but I appreciate yeah. that. And, and, and it probably, probably had like stamina was what they had stamina then oh, it was uh on turned off <laughs> turned, <laughs> turned off <laughs> the break tackle was all the way up wow it was like a, that's uh, awesome but yeah that's so th awesome. this is actually your second best game ever uh but i just what does it mean to have a game like that for such a historic university have that under your belt be in the record book what's that mean to you well, uh, now it's no longer um, the, the single single game rushing record um, that was broken um, uh, two years ago, I think. But um, for what it stands for, you know, prior to that, if you know my story, you know, I fumbled twice against Illinois in my freshman year. Mm -hmm. And um, I struggled to get back on the field. The, the, our backfield was loaded. And like I said, Robert was there. Uh, my freshman year, he was a sophomore, redshirt sophomore, Raymond Harris, mm -hmm. Butler Bonote, Jeff Cothran, a um, couple of other young backs. And they all played in the NFL, mind you. Mm -hmm. So it was um, it was a tough road for me. So I had to dig myself out of the, out of the doghouse and grind, man, um, over that two year period. I mean, I could have gone to a, a, a different school and, and ran away from that 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 uh, that uh, adversity, but I ran toward it. Um, I'm glad I did, you know, because it, it taught me that, you know, you can you cannot run from those demons. You got to meet it head on, and what you'll find is once you conquer that, you'll see the greatness. There. So I say all that to say, um, I was able to play against. Uh, top ranked defense in Illinois who was ranked number one in the country versus the run on a day where everybody in the stadium knew we were going to run the football. Mm -hmm. It was cold. It was wet. It was snowing. We were down Terry Glenn who, was, who wasn't who was playing in the game because he suffered a, uh, a separated shoulder the week before and it was it was nine on seven. You know, if you play football, that's a drill where it's the safeties are unblocked mm -hmm. and uh, in practice, and it's you versus the safeties. And we just imposed our will on them that day. Orlando was amazing. Ricky Dudley uh, was awesome uh, blocking. Um, Nikki Sua Lua, Juan Porter, Jamie Sumner, um, Eric Golson. You know, they were all phenomenal guys up front, man. And, and we were just clicking on all cylinders. And I, I recall... In the first half, I mean, I was just unconscious. My, my sole goal was to just beat Illinois. <laughs> that was it. I just, I had, they came in talking so much trash. They, they were like, yeah, we have a lease on Ohio Stadium. When they play us, they choke and all. I said, okay, oh <laughs> you're ranked number two in the country. You want to disrespect us coming in here? Okay. Gloves, gloves are off. And I remember going at halftime, I'm going to the locker room. And Jamie Summers says, yo, dude, do you see how many yards you have right now? <laughs> it was like 180 at halftime. I was like, I didn't even realize it. I wasn't even counting the, the yards. I was just had my mind on beating this football team and, and not giving them an opportunity to uh, find a way to get back in the ball game. <laughs> and it, mind you, that with 300 was done in three quarters. Troll. So wow. I was sitting down for pretty much the whole fourth quarter. And oh. Illinois probably wasn't talking much more. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and they had two guys that went in the, in the top five in the NFL draft that year, Simeon Rice and Kevin Hardy. That, those are good, those are good mm -hmm. players. Out. Yes, uh, sir. So before we get you out of here, first of all, thank you so much for sitting down with us, taking mm -hmm. some time. Uh, just if you had to give one piece of advice to a young high school kid out there trying to make it to the next level, you're a college coach. What's one piece of advice you'd give to them to try to make it? Oh, man, um, is to take care of your grades. The better your grades, the more opportunities you give yourself to go to any institution. And that's you don't want to be an academic liability. You know, you might have the talent, but talent can take you so far. Um, your grind, your work ethic, um, who you are on a day-to-day -day basis is who you're going to be on the football field, meaning that the moment that you wake up, what is your, your intention? Do you make your bed? Are you eating right? Are you thinking right? Are you around the right people? Um, are you praying at night? I mean, all that stuff matters because somebody said it today that um, without faith, there is no hope. 
-hmm. And you've got to have faith in this thing because you're going to get slapped across the face with so many different things that are going to come against you trying to for you to accomplish your goal that you can get discouraged and doubt creeps in. And then there's then then you're you're uh, in a state of distortion from the truth. And then you're uh, separate from your ultimate goal and you're discouraged from even moving on in it. So the key is, is to connect to the right things, connect to the right people, um, build in every day a goal to read something that's impactful, uh, saying the right mantras to yourself from a mental perspective, getting around the right people of like mindedness and people that are going to challenge you from a social perspective, you know, train your ass off, you know, uh, by working out, uh, getting your sleep, eating right, doing all the things there. And then, you know, from a, um, uh, 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 let's say mental, spiritual, social, uh, physical, um, and yeah, that's that's what I would say. I would say those four things. Find something every day to do in that, and that's how you're sharpening your soul. Man, I got four years of eligibility left. Let's go. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Uh, yeah, th- my knees probably aren't gonna let me. <laughs> awesome. I appreciate you sitting down with us, man. This was a dream come true. Well, I enjoyed um, it. So thank you so much, and once again, congratulations on the uh, induction. Thank you. Now I'm going to have a glass of wine. So enjoy, have, it. enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. it, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Yep. Yeah. So again, we just want to thank everybody who took the time to sit down and talk with us at the National High School Football Hall of Fame second annual induction ceremony. You know, like a, like Bob Golick said, he he did what didn't even know that the National High School Football Hall of Fame, which by the way is a mouthful, <laughs> but he he didn't even know it was a thing, and that's because until last year it was not a thing. There was no Hall of Fame to recognize high school football players throughout the country. And this isn't just Ohio. I've had people ask that. This is the national across the entire country high school football hall of fame. So this is a big deal. You know, we have the pro football hall of fame. We have the college football hall of fame, and now we have the high school football hall of fame. It's very awesome. Very exciting to be right, right here in our backyard in Canton, Ohio, where we get to go up there, meet with these guys and bring them to you. So uh, next year, We're going to be doing more work with the NHS Football Hall of Fame leading up to the event ahead of time, get you guys prepared, tell you who the inductees are going to be, who's going to be there at the ceremony. It was was a ton of fun, the ceremony, like we, we talked about with the guys. The speeches were incredible. A lot of good stuff was said, and it was just overall a very enjoyable event. And we're, you know, the Hall of Fame is really hoping to grow this year after year after year. And so just get it in your heads now, put it in your calendars, maybe ahead of times that just in early June next year, there's going to be the induction ceremony. Most likely we'll be there again. So if you guys want to come up, hang out with us, we had an entire section basically in the auditorium to ourselves, like a whole row or two. Come up, sit with us, hang out, meet us, greet us, and we'll, we'll sit with you and talk Browns and football and listen to these guys give their speeches and just honor them for everything that they've done for the game of football. So ton of fun, uh, just a, a dream come true for, you know, me and Blake and Justin. I mean, Eddie George was literally the player who got me interested in football in the first place, not just NFL football, but football in general. And And when I started watching him, that's why I wanted to be and did become a running back when I played football. So Eddie George was awesome. Shout out to Nate Burleson. Stump Mitchell, thank you again for sitting down with us. Ted Ginn Jr., awesome as always. I'm glad. This is the second time I've got to sit down and talk and, and meet with Ted, which so cool. And, of course, Bob Golick, just a, that guy's hilarious. I, I mean, if, if you didn't laugh during that. And his speech, by the way, not, not nothing against anybody else. Everybody's speeches were great. Bob's was hilarious. He had me rolling on the floor laughing almost literally during his speech. So it was great stuff. And I just, again, want to thank you guys for tuning into this episode, following along. And really what I want to get to with everything here is us being able to go talk to these football legends and bring their interviews and their stories and everything to you guys It's all thanks to you guys. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. This podcast would not be where it is without you guys watching, listening, following, supporting, subscribing, liking, sharing, all that stuff that you do to help our show just get better and better and better and bring you guys more content like this. So we're very excited. We have even more big things coming up in the works over the summer. So stay tuned. We don't want to say what it is until, you know, it's actually down 
you know, in stone, but it there, there are some really cool things coming. That's what I'll say. So just stay tuned and make sure you guys are subscribed, have the notification bell on YouTube. And, you know, if you've listened to this episode this long and you're going to finish it out to the end, might as well just remind you if you're listening on you know, Apple, Spotify, five-star reviews help the show a ton, especially on Apple Podcasts. A written five-star review goes a long way to helping the show and getting us in front of more Browns fans like you guys. And we love you. You are the best audience in the world. And again, would not be able to do what we are doing, these types of events and things without you guys. So again, stay tuned over the summer. We got big things coming and stay plugged in for the National High School Football Hall of Fame third annual induction ceremony next year and we will be announcing who the inductees are as soon as those are voted upon and selected and we'll gear up a lot earlier next year for the event so hopefully we'll get to meet some of you guys there we'll get a bigger crowd together and it'll be a ton of fun so everybody have a great week and until we see you guys in the next one let's go browns Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.